and we are live we've gone live guys how about a sound check with texas hula you in there yes sir. yes sir oh yeah we got you you're sounding good Jeez, my hair's a mess i'm not pretty you look better than i do texas I don't, I don't know about that, Pops. I don't know about that. I just got out of the shower. It's that freshly showered look is what it is. Yeah, I, you know, I just did the same thing at, too. Guys, this <laughs> is Pops here tonight. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I see people coming into chat. We've got Texas Hula with us here tonight. I want to start this background video. There we go. It's running in the background. So we're going we're gonna to play that. in the, This is kind of a new setup. So I'll be interested to see what the feedback is on it. And uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's good. I kind of like it. And uh, there'll be some up-close looks at some of the work that Texas Hula is doing in his shop. First of all, Texas, first question out of the shoot, if you will. All right, let's go. What in the world ever possessed you to start streaming your wood shop wood lathe work man i tell you it, um I, I was streaming from the shop from the office you know playing games i was there from world of warships to oh man daisy and stuff like that i just got in that little rut i kept on walking through the shop and i'm like man there's a shop right here why am i not out in the shop well i got my stream and i'm like well why don't i just stream from the shop and i started looking around are people doing it i found a guy named timber new uh, on Twitch, uh, on the Makers and Crafters, and I tell you what, I was I was hooked ever since then, man. An awesome dude, I've become good friends with that guy. I've been supporting that good guy from the day I met him, and uh, he's one inspired me to try this, and it's just evolved. It is just thrown legs and walked down the door. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now I did. I think I saw a guy uh, doing like automotive work from his workshop or something live. There's quite a few guys like that. You know, doing that, and it, the, your setup mm -hmm. reminds me of what they were doing there. What about the name Texas Hula? Why didn't you just call yourself Joe or? Well, you know, Dan is not a, a freaking awesome name, so I had to change it up a little bit. Truth of the matter is, is I actually went, wrote with the motorcycle organization for for many, many years. Uh, I was I was a new prospect, and as a new prospect, I was. Um, at a gas station in Palestine, Texas, and I was TBD. I didn't have a name. I didn't have a road name yet. You got to have a road name, right? So I was TBD. Uh, long story short, I'm going to make it the PG version. I was putting some sunscreen on because my wife's always getting on to me about me burning. I would turn red as a beet, and I peel and wash, rinse, and repeat. I was putting sunscreen on, an old, dirty, salty patch. If you know the old, dirty, salty patch is like a guy who's been patched in for a long time. He's got the miles. He's got the, yes, he's got the old, dirty, salty patch. He wanted to know who... Long, it came out to, to who smelled like a, it's like a beach out here. It's like I'm waiting for hula girls to show up, and am I in Hawaii? And next thing I know, the, at nerves, I just <laughs> did a hula dance at a gas station in Palestine, Texas. His eyes got real big, and I was hula ever since then. So I got on Twitch, and I'm like, well, I, I don't need a name. I already got a name, and I'll be... Somebody took my name, though, Pops. That's my one problem is how many hulas is out there? How many bikers do you know named hula out there? Somebody yep. took my name, so I just went, I went with Texas hula. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I, I, I think it's per perfect. You know, I was telling Mrs. Pops here, uh, of course, she'd, she's known. I actually had her out here watching you, your videos as well. Cubby, thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. But I had Mrs. Oh, yeah, Cubby guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, uh, Mrs. Pops out here watching your videos. And so when I went in today and I said, don't forget, I got the interview tonight. I'll have to have dinner after. But um, she said, who are you doing tonight? And I said, I'm interviewing Texas Hula. She said, where's he from anyway? <laughs> I kid you not. Oh, Texas, we lost your audio, man. We lost your audio. Oh, oh you're back. All right. You're back. We're Give good? me a... Yep, All right. we're good. All right, yeah, I couldn't hear you laugh, man. But she, she said, where is he from? And I said, Nancy, Texas. <laughs> He's from Texas. <laughs> Overall, with a sub. Oh, my goodness, here tonight. Uh, two months, Bo. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, 
So, how long Sturgis Gaming with the host? I, I may have sh should shut those alerts off. I don't, I don't expect too many tonight, but Texas, how long, or should I just call you Hula? Yeah, Francis, call me Hula Pops. Yeah, Hula. Um, there you go. How long have you been doing the woodworking? Um, woodwork I've been doing for roughly about 12 years. I took a hiatus when I was uh, with the motorcycle organization. And uh, I, got, I got jaded for a little while. I'll be honest with you, uh, because 40 hours on a project and folks just, it, it, we, it's, it's just lack of knowledge, Pops. It's like folks didn't realize, like, hey, I spent 40 hours of my time, tools, materials, learning a new trade, trying this and trying that. And, and folks just, they're, they're used to the, I always call it the, the Walmart microwave syndrome. They want it cheap and they want it That's yesterday, right. if that makes sense. So folks, we, we really lost track of what it is to create things with your very own hands and the painstaking labor and then what it goes into doing it. And it's a passion, it's a labor of love, uh, but it costs us money to do it and, and, and whatnot like that. So I quit woodworking for a while. I was like, why am I doing, why should I waste 40 hours of my time on one particular piece? It's going to be an heirloom jewelry box for a little 12 year old girl, which I'm really proud of that box, really proud of that box. <laughs> Tactical alert, but vessel I, I approaching, quit. bearing 184, Mark 7. And I think it's one of the reasons why um, I got really excited about why, when we went back into the shop after my hiatus, and um, I, one of those things, instead of complaining that nobody knows, I actually get the opportunity to show people. I actually get to show people the work that goes into pieces and, and the labor and the, the many steps and all this and all that for things that I know and things that I'm learning as well. In a lot of ways, we're all learning together. So it's, 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 it's passing on something I'm very, very passionate about, if that makes sense. So it's, it it, it's it does. Weird. It does. I'm a clocksmith uh, uh, amateur clocksmith right on and so i did a lot of work on restoring and and refinishing and repairing clocks and you would spend 60 hours on a project they want you to pay 30 bucks you know they pay you 30 bucks for it so yeah, yeah. i can i can relate to that i know well, i watch what I think I think a lot of it's just the, uh, the unknown. And folks just don't know. And let's be fair. I mean, I, I don't know what it takes to be a thermonuclear engineer. You know, I, we take yeah. it for granted. Somebody may not know how long it takes to make a bowl. You know, so it's just, I don't know. Sometimes we just got to educate a little bit. You know, give everybody a little bit of a break. I don't, I'm ignorant of a lot of subjects, but I'm always willing to learn. And, and you know, us doing stuff like this here, which is really awesome. Because I feel like I'm not only helping my stream, helping the people in my stream, but I'm actually helping other creators down the road, painters, uh, sculptors, you know, um, boat makers, the whole nine yards. I'm yeah. actually helping shed light on what they're doing. So I, I feel like I'm helping the whole creator side. Yeah, I know uh, when you've rated some, some of the other makers that that's exposing me and all your other viewers to people they probably wouldn't normally find on on twitch it's awesome most uh, definitely most definitely but that being said so you've you've uh you've done the woodworking for 12 years how long have you been doing the streaming streaming aspect? By, yeah man i'd probably say going on two years i guess about two years now yeah, I would say two years, because I've been turning for roughly a year and a half. I literally learned how to turn. I got my first lathe in the stream. I learned how to stream uh, to, to to turn up turn on the lathe in the stream. I cut my teeth in the stream, you know. So it's like folks right. got to witness somebody new and and never put a hand on it at first at at all. And here I am. So it's it's so it's cool. It's like if folks will, I'll, they'll see something I make, like oh my god, I was like, you mean mistakes I've made before this year. You know how many stuff that went into, we have a, uh, uh, keep it PG, we have an effort bucket. Every shop needs to have an effort bucket. That's where just things get to a certain point, you just drop it in that bucket and move on. Yep. So mistakes are made. And, and folks can go back and review my videos from a long time ago. And it's like, oh my goodness, that dude, the guy's no different than I am when I first started, you know. Yeah, I, I was watching your video the other day when you redid one of your mistakes. You made it into something different i think you made it oh, into yeah. a bowl i i think but and it came out beautiful it was like god had 
looked at that piece of wood and said, Hula, you're making a mistake. You need to make this into something different because, you know, that was cool. Yeah. It's one of the things that I think when, when, when things happen in life and they don't go the exact direction you need to go, sometimes you just need to evolve it. Sometimes you just got to change the direction a little bit. Sometimes you got to flip the script. There's, there's no sense in that piece going in the trash. There's still a beautiful piece of beautiful piece. It was purple heart. I mean, beautiful piece of wood. That's and right. I'll be dog, we flipped that sucker around and that dude is, it's pretty. It's, somebody's going to win a really nice bowl this, year, this month. All I know. Somebody's going to yep. win a really nice bowl now, this month. Well, since you brought it up, how did how did they how are you doing the giveaway for that? I do that pretty much. It's it's my way of giving them back to the subs. So it's it's a, it's a sub only giveaway. If you're a sub, you're you're automatically entered at the end of the month. You know, sort of thing. Because it's it's kind of my way of saying thank you, kind of giving something back. Okay. Do you do you do that out on your Discord channel? Mm -mm. I actually do it live on stream. Uh, I just basically tally all the subs. I throw it in a pot. Do a random pick on the front. I got everybody in the uh, chat saying that's not how you spell my name. Oh. And <laughs> you want to pick a winner, you know? No doubt. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's really nice. It was The better part about it is folks actually get to see this piece being created. It's not something like I picked up off the shelf here or I went down the store and picked up. They got to see this piece being made and the time put into it. So they're, they got time vested in it as, just as much as I do, you know, watching it being created. I just think it's an awesome opportunity. It's just an incredibly awesome opportunity. You know, it, it, and then on top of that, you get to hang out in the shop, Pop. Say so you get to see a piece being made, and then one of these days, if you're the winner, you can actually walk by and see that sucker sitting on your your shelf, or or use it yourself, or give it as a gift to somebody else. It's just, it, it's really neat to actually have these pieces in your hand. That's one thing I love hearing is, the the camera doesn't do it justice, the pictures don't do it justice. Is they and when people put it in their hands, the the prize right. I get that that makes me get back up the next day and do it again. Oh, that's awesome, man. Dude, now, one thing I've never noticed, and I've got to ask this question. I thought of it last night when I was kind of prepping myself for tonight. I have never noticed you put a maker's mark on any of your work. Do you have a maker's mark? And I'm not I, talking I, about I, alcohol here. <laughs> I do sign all my, my pieces, uh, except for my magic wands. Magic wands are the only thing I haven't signed yet, and I am working on a small, like an H, uh, maker's mark. And, and, and I am going for that for my magic wands. My biggest thing is, though, for magic wands, I got into those. That's a whole different, well, that, I have no idea where that came from. I, it, Lacey Lilith, that's exactly where it came from. And that thing has just exploded. So I'm trying to figure out how to put a maker's mark on this piece without taking away from the piece, if that makes sense. Right, you it, know, it kind of, does, yeah. It does so very much. I'm, I'm try, trying to figure out how to do it, but I'll, I'll do it I do it all by hand. I'll, one of these days, I'll eventually have maybe like a set brand, but I'll still sign every piece with these two hands. I mean, these, yeah, these two hands. I'll actually sign the piece myself. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, back to streaming. You said you started streaming maybe a couple years ago. But you didn't start streaming in your workshop back then. What did you start streaming with? Oh my goodness! I started streaming off my PlayStation and a uh, and what is that? What is that? Where you plug your PlayStation into it and it goes into your PC? It's like a um, capture card oh, or something. Yeah, a capture card. Yeah, yep. a capture card. I run off of that. Then I got into a few uh, PC games. It's not my strongest. And then a guy named uh, Big D Live uh, got me hooked on freaking World of Warships, and I literally cannot put the game down. That's, that's, that's been my main game for like the last two years now, two and a half years now. So, right. Um, right. Yeah, it's, it's Lacey's fault for all the mod ones. Uh -huh. she, 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 she admitted that. Now, one of the <laughs> questions I just saw, guys, and I apologize, I can't catch every question going on in chat. I, I need an Eddie, Ed McMahon on my team, a third guy, just to keep track of what's going on in chat and talk into my other ear or something. But um, Hula, feel free not to answer this question if you don't want to. But the, the question is, how much do you have invent, invested in just your tools out in the workshop? A lot. Yeah. Uh, a lot. A lot. There's, there's a lot. 
I mean, like right now, my, my next upgrade I really desperately need is a, um, is a bandsaw. Uh, I'm looking at a bandsaw that can actually hold, handle the, uh, the bow blanks that I need to turn. Save me a lot of time, save me a lot of effort, and actually make things a lot safer. The bandsaw I'm looking at to handle the things I need to do, I'm looking at spending around thirty-two dollars to $3,400 just for the, just that one bandsaw. Uh, so that way, so yeah, it's, things are getting really expensive. The supplies cost a lot. You're talking sandpapers, your finishes, your glues, your, uh, you know, gouges. I go through gouges quite often. I chew, especially on some woods. Some woods just chew up gouges like nobody else. Well, they just chews up, <laughs> chews up gouges. So yeah, I got I a lot of money invested. I see you when you when you're doing your lathe work that every so often you take your tool and hit it on the grindstone over there put a put a point or uh an edge on it if you will that's got to that's got to wear down after a while yeah it, they do they do and that's why um uh, I mean it depends on the gouges I I, bet, I purchased one set of gouges uh Steve Bailey's um I spent a lot of money on those right there, but they're big boys. They can handle bigger bowls. I, I'm doing bigger bowls, bigger pieces. Uh, but I still, I have this one cheaper gouge. It's, it's a $50 gouge that I keep going to. And that's my one. I keep going back to it. I don't know. I got all these gouges up here. I keep grabbing that one three eighths bowl gouge every time. Yeah. It's just, it works on bigger stuff. It works on smaller stuff. It's just, I guess my, it's my, it's my comfy blanket, I guess. My, my, whatever you yeah, want to call that little, uh, yeah, it's just like my go-to. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, dude. that's that's how I treat the Massachusetts in the World of Warships games. It's my go-to ship, right? <laughs> my go-to. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. Um. Now I personally have wood shop stuff. I got bar clamps and I got a bandsaw. My bandsaws, you know, it's a Craftsman what three hundred dollar bandsaw. What you're talking about is much higher end, and I love the lathe you got. I have never done any lathe work, but that oh. is awesome, man. That looks that, like that so is much Luna fun. The Laguna, that is my girl. That I'm telling you, what that is a workhorse. If I had one complaint, I wish she was just a little bit bigger. Other than that, I have no complaints at that lathe. If anybody's looking to get a lathe, you want a big boy Laguna 1836, epic. They're they're, they're just they're just cheese. That's my girl. I, yeah, I there's, love that there's, I'm watching it. It's spinning behind your head right now, and and yeah. there is absolutely no wobble in that head mm -hmm. at all. None. It's rock solid. It's awesome. And she's usually running right there when I'm doing finials. That's running right around three thousand RPMs. Is what I got her. She's she's humming. She's just flat out humming. Yeah. Uh, uh here's a good good personal interest story mm -hmm. what what is a con i ask this of everybody what is a common myth about texas hula and is it true or is it false It's almost like I'm, if I answer, answer this question wrong, I'm feeding the trolls. <laughs> if, I answer this, if I answer this question right, I'm still feeding the trolls. I mean, I, I see them under the bridge right now, Pops. They're just they're just, they're just they're up there. Uh, I, got, I got one thing that I do have in the works, and I, I will go ahead and do a little spoiler right here. All right, Pops, we'll do this here. There's a rumor that somebody, when they married a, a very, very stunning, beautiful bride about 19 years ago, uh, actually, March 23rd, 19 years ago, happened to look just like Harry Potter. I'm not saying that myth is true or it's false, but if, I don't know, maybe for a special occasion or something like that, we may either deny or actually <laughs> acknowledge <laughs> said thing. Oh, uh, man. So how appropriate that you're making the Harry Potter wands thing, right? That is crazy. It is crazy. If you pulled up, I was sitting at a gas station, something like that on my bike, and somebody's like, hey, Hula, hey, man, hey, bro, you're going to be making magic wands here in a couple of years, and then you're going to be sending them to place like the Netherlands and, <laughs> um, and, and all kinds. Of, I'll be like, dude, have you lost your daggum mind? Have you lost yeah. your mind, dude? You've been in the sun too damn long. And here I am, Pop. I'm, it, I, it's, it's, and I love making them. That's, that's, that's what I guess is a really cool part about it is not only am I making them, I really, 
really, really enjoy making them. They're a lot yeah. of fun. I, I like the whole whimsical kind of idea behind it. You, you know what surprises me the most out of you making those wands is that big hunk of wood that most of it ends up on your shop floor and you end yeah. up with this little wand left. Yeah, I know, right? Well, there's a, there's, the harder woods is, is a lot more finicky. So for, for folks who don't know, if you've got a long piece of wood, like so long, right? And then you imagine you thin this, or it's like thinner. The more pressure you put in the middle is going to bow more, right? So that's going to be more vibration, more chatter and stuff like that. Yep. Right now, I like to leave mine. Mine's, it, they're about an inch and a quarter thick when I turn them. And I turn them way down to a lot more. And I usually go to the end down to try to stop the, some of the vibration. Still have the vibration, but it's a lot less. So there's... I mean, maybe there's, there's, I'm sure there's super skilled rock stars out there that can do this a lot better than me, but that's kind of how I'm doing them right now. And it's working yeah. out pretty good. Now, if, if there's anybody out, out here watching tonight and they're interested in getting any of your products, bowls, wands, how, how, do, they, how do they do that? Well, right now, we just launched about a week and a half ago. I launched my own website. It's hulaswoodworks.com. Uh, I'm, it's, it's a thing in, in, in progress. Uh, I'm also on Discord. Uh, a lot of times right now, I'll get most of my messages on Discord, and a lot of my stuff is actually made to order um, commissions. Uh, I'm, I'm, quite, it's, it's, I'm in a good spot, Pops, because I want to eventually have a, a storeroom where I can actually have materials available for folks to purchase. But right now, I'm almost in that spot where I'll be working on a bowl, and somebody will come in and say, hey, Hula, whose bowl is that? And like, nobody's yet. It's mine. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah. it's both theirs. So it's uh, it's it's kind of neat. It's it's a really it's, it's a really good spot to be. It's a very humbling spot to be in. And I'm I'm really, I'm really uh, I'm really blessed to be honest with you. I I get to do what I enjoy doing, and people enjoy what I'm doing. So it's win win. Yeah. Now have have you have you done any YouTube videos like how to videos or anything like that? I have not. Uh, so so um. So I, I work, I work full-time. Uh, I'm a uh, fleet manager for a pretty decent sized EMS company. Uh, so I pretty much run a shop. I purchase all the ambulances. I make sure everything's going. I, I got a lot of, I, I did, I did streaming to kind of give you a place to escape kind of a, a, a chill place where I don't have constant stuff coming at me, which my phone still goes off all the time. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, oh, YouTube videos. YouTube. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. So, I mean, uh, with work, uh, I stream roughly approximately anywhere from 70, 80 hours a month, you know, and plus my commission jobs. I just don't have time. I just, I just, uh, I've thought about chopping up some of my videos and putting them on there, but I almost kind of feel like that's, I don't know. I think it's just throwing something at something to see if it sticks. And I, if I was going to do it, I'd want to do it right, if that makes sense. So yeah. right now, Twitch is my main my main thing. I enjoy it. I love the one-on-one. -on -one. I love hanging out with folks. I like um, getting um, – I, I like being there with folks, you know, on good days and bad days. I, I really enjoy just hanging out with folks, and they, they motivate me and actually help drive me in the shop. So, so, so yeah, it's, it's kind of – well. Where where do you see yourself in five years? Hmm. So I I have a uh, I, I call it my ten year plan, pops. I got a, I got a plan that I just I put in place last year. So we're about I got about eight and a half years left to go. Realist, pops. I'm a realist. I'm a super realist, but so my my goal is is that I want the day that's going to come where I can get up in the morning, uh, grab my cup of coffee, kiss my soup on the cheek. Uh, and walk out my back door, walk into my shop, and make things full time. That is that is my dream. Um, streaming, I've loved streaming, and I, I would stream as much as I possibly can. But ultimately, my main thing I want to do is I want to create. I want to use these things here as long as I possibly can. I, I just want to create a life that I don't ever have to retire from. I, I don't mind being a ninety year old man sitting in a wood shop. That 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 thought doesn't doesn't bother me at all. Being a mechanic by trade, being a sixty year old man in a in a in an ambulance shop or or a truck shop or you know busted knuckles, I I don't want to be that guy. I just don't want to be that guy. So um, the stream is stream has helped so immensely to help me get to that point right there. So stream is very important. Um, when we're working on constantly growing that there, but my but to be just as honest I possibly possibly can is my main goal is to be able to create things every day.
Now, so, that, I, I have noticed, attention to detail, at least from my point of view, that um, you seem to be working from a two-car garage attached to your house. Am I right there? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Any, any plans to go into a bigger shop out in the backyard or something like that? Um, so <laughs> that one time it was talking about here at the house. Um, right now we decided that we're not going to do anything uh, right right now. Uh, there's actually uh, talks of purchasing some family owned property um, and that already has a 40 by 40 shop on it at this very wow. moment. And, and it's a monster. It's a shop. It'd be one of those shops where I build a shop inside a shop sort of thing. So yes, that is, that is definitely on the plans. I need a big, Pops, I won't be honest with you. As, as I mentioned, I have a ten-year plan. I got a big, big goals. I, I don't like putting all my eggs in one basket. As we talked earlier, I got a lot of ideas and thoughts to actually allow me to get in the shop and do things every day and create every day. And it has everything to actually creating pieces for folks. I've already, once we get the business actually up and running and get everything legitimized, um, I'm gonna start doing production work for a, a for Phillips Force Products here in Texas. It's the Otis family-owned. Uh, uh, meal in the state of Texas, and I'm very proud to have them. They're interested for me to start doing production work for them. So as production work, my own creations, some streaming involved, and I also want to get into uh, classes. I would love one day to actually teach. I would love to to, to be able to help other people continue uh, this passion. After I'm if, if after I'm long dead and gone, if I'm dust in the ground, some maybe something I said to somebody inspired somebody or taught somebody, it's going to be passed on to the next generation, the next generation. So it's very important to me that I. I have the opportunity to teach as well. So with that being said, I need a bigger shop because I think the best way to actually learn stuff, me personally, is by putting my hands on things. Um, I can read a book all day long. I can watch videos all day long, but it really, I don't, it doesn't sink into this thick noggin until I actually put my hands on it. And I'm sure I can't be the only person. So my dream is to have four, five, six, seven lays sitting in a shop <clears throat> and um, folks come out to the shop and we actually have like multiple day classes where I'm teaching you how to make a bowl. You're going to make your own bowl on a lathe sort of thing. Awesome. That's the best way to learn. You know, uh, big, big, big plans. That's awesome. Uh, a while back when I lived up in uh, Maine, I was fortunate enough to, to uh, purchase a farm that used to belong to Stephen King's uncle, as a matter of fact. And it was a uh, apple orchard. There was a 30 by 60 shop for apples out there. There wasn't a post in it. The second story was trusses uh, like cables that held the ceiling up. So you had 30 by 60 open shop in there. I mean, I started wow. putting woodwork and tools in there and going crazy. But anyway, wow. that's an, that's my story. That's not your story. Never mind that. Um, I, what less. what about your your community that you're building? Do you think that your community is mostly U.S. based, or are you starting to pick up uh, some people from the U.K. that kind of thing? Man, we are all over the place. And I'll tell you another thing: is I hate I not I hate hate the wrong word. I just it's not my community. It's, it's, I, it's a bunch of rowdy folks that I get to hang out with and uh, special, share awesome moments, share not so awesome moments, you know, mistakes, failures, successes, positive things. I, I, we're literally, I mean, it is so broad, Pops. It's so broad. I mean, I, I have pieces now that's in seven different countries, uh, ranging anywhere from the Netherlands uh, to Israel you know, in Canada and the UK and Germany and, and you name it, we're, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's humbling. It is incredibly humbling, you know? Awesome. So I, I can say I got friends around the world. That is awesome. I, I gotta, I gotta pay the piper here just a second. We got, uh, Katayama come in with the resub. Thanks Katayama. Appreciate it. Uh, I think there was another one. Captain David, come in with the resub. Thank you very much for the resub. And I think I missed one a while back. Let me scroll. Uh, Spectra326, come in with the resub. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
we we had to pay our sponsors here at Texas. Oh, I totally Hold understand yeah. that. I totally understand that. Yeah, you got, you got to pay that uh, that uh, internet bill. Yeah, got to pay it, man. <laughs> got to pay it. Um, uh, where was I headed? Okay, uh, streaming in your wood shop. This has got to be a question on everybody's mind. How do you do all that audio switching? I mean, you're standing at the lathe cranking, wood chips are flying, and yet I can hear you talk, and it's clear as bell. How do you accomplish all that? It's, uh, uh, man, I don't know. It's, 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 I, I wonder <laughs> myself. I wonder myself sometimes. Oh, hey, you got a hype train going on there, Pops. Look at that right there. What? Is that oh, my gosh. Going? Yeah, I trained Look level that. one. Get rowdy up in here. Let's go. Whoa. Pops deserves all the love, y'all. Skelos, not skelos. Skelos, not skelos with the, <laughs> with the resub. Seven months. Thanks, dude. I trained number one. Done. Wow. Love it. Love it. There you go, Pops. There man. you go. Yeah. I see glitter up there, but it's not man glitter, but we're going to let it fly. We'll yeah, that's fly. right. That's right. We love the man glitter, though, too, I tell you. Definitely love the man glitter. But now in, in the shop, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of learning. And that's, I, I guess, I'm not a technical guy. Um, the, yes, uh, Cody, I do, I do have Texas speech for, uh, for stuff. It's, it's a stuff perk uh, due to me doing things with my hands and can't read chat. Um, but it's, it's, it's everything from the audio. And, and I got friends, Pops. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not that super sharp when it comes to PCs and audio and video. And I've got a lot of good friends who uh, take pity on me. I mean, they're helping me out. And they, <laughs> they help me uh, get things to a point. I've learned a few things. YouTube and Google is my best friend. I will say that right there. Yeah, no, yeah, do, no doubt. Players. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, there's shit. We got a hype train. We got level two hype train going on now. Um, the uh, audio. Let me let me talk more about the audio. Of course, you're not wired. Everything I do is wired. You know, I got a wired headset. Uh, did you have Bluetooth? Is Bluetooth working for you? Yes, uh, for my audio when I listen, I, I bought two cheapo kind of PlayStation PC headsets i got two identical and um so when when they'll last about seven hours and because i used to do the seven eight nine hour streams i had to cut that back because lacy said my brain gets fried but she's <laughs> actually right my brain does get fried after a while uh streaming that long in the shop i have multiple of those i use a um, a wireless lapel mic actually one of the main reasons why i wear my uh, apron all the time is i keep my wireless lapel mic on it uh, it starts to get hung up and, and messed up. I use potato um, voice meter, uh, potato, uh, to actually adjust everything and get everything sounding kind of right and whatnot like that. I have a uh, my little wireless thing for my uh, my mic sitting right up here. I had issues when I get around the workbench. It, it quit picking me up, so I had to stick it up in the ear on the HDMI cable. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of trial and error, pops. It's like. This works, that doesn't work, this works, that doesn't work. So let's stick with what works, let's try to make it better. And we're constantly, eventually I'll have to get better better headset, better mics and whatnot like that. But for the, the bang for the buck, that, that F-I-N-E, the fine uh, lapel mic, uh, for, the, for the bang, it's, it's, it's done me really well, to be honest with you. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Katayama, thanks for those gift subs, man, appreciate it. Katayama coming in and gift subbing out to some special people. Thank you so much. Um, so how, how many, how many video cameras do you have going in your shop during the stream? I have three. Eventually I want to upgrade the PC and, uh, I want to get more. Uh, in fact, I also want to get to a point where I have a crazy idea of actually, I don't know. I'll probably regret it. I'll get trolled so bad, but there's a way I can set where mods can actually control what cameras being viewed. Because I may I have a project on my mind. I'm thinking, hey, I'm fixing to make this cut here. I'm going to sharpen this thing right here. I got to remember this one certain spot. I need to keep on this. And that's a lot of folks don't realize. I may be carrying on a conversation with you. I may be carrying a conversation with Spectre. I'm cracking jokes with White Wolf. And I'm trying to concentrate that one little spot right there that I really need to get cleaned up before I get to the next pass. Uh, sometimes I forget to change scenes. Sometimes I forget to switch this over here. I think that'd be very, very handy. I got epic mods. I, Bob, I got some of the best mods in the world. And they watch out. They watch my six. 
so incredibly well. And and I think I, I want to get to a point where we can actually have them actually directing some of the cameras so I don't have to constantly do it on my own in case I forget. Heaven forbid I forget anything. Yeah. No, we're not wearing the same glasses. Mine, you can actually okay. see, kind of has a yellow tint to them. I've got those yeah, blue, blue, blue blockers. You know, they're, they're, they block the blue light from the monitor. I sit in front of monitors all day. But anyway, uh, the, the, uh, keep in the back of your mind, Hula, that I have a, tool that you might be interested in it's it's software it's awesome and even better than that it's free yeah so uh remind me to tell you about that offline sometime i'll i'll share that yeah. with you i'll share that Definitely. uh it's it's a way that you could actually have your monitors i don't mean i, I your mods is what i'm saying be in any part of the world and they could be controlling some of your stuff and in, in being like a studio guy where they say shift to camera three now go to camera two you know those oh, kind of epic. things yeah so you can that do it for that epic. i'll share that with you uh what what's been your biggest accomplishment with streaming not woodshop but w with streaming what do you think your biggest accomplishment's been Here's one thing, Pops. Excuse me. What it makes me think is uh, I was, I was, we got in this rut where we, we start worrying about successful streams. And I was reading a lot of stuff about, and folks were like, well, your, your stream's successful, this. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going a different approach to your. A concerned your, shipmate your, your has reminded you to hydrate. Um, the most successful thing I think I've done in my stream is the day that I woke up. And I realized um, that that the numbers don't define don't define how how successful a stream is. It is the people that you have in it, the friends you've met, the relationships you've created, and the people you get to hang out. And the moment I, I think the best, most successful thing I've ever done in my stream is the moment I quit worrying about numbers completely, and I've started worrying about friends and relationships I made. The day I figured that out in my head, and I just made a hundred percent certain. It's like everything's changed. So that, to me, was the biggest thing I think I've ever done in my stream is the day I realized it's not about the numbers, it's about relationships, and it's about the friendships you make and, and the connections you make with people. That's, that's what I see uh, was one of the biggest parts of my, my stream career that I felt like, boom, you know. Yeah. And it's just, I'm a sappy old fart about stuff like that, I guess, sometimes. You know, what, what, I'm going to tell you, Hula, I am not the only one that's going to say this. And I am sure everybody in here in chat is going to agree. You, my friend, are going to make partner this year with Twitch Partner. There is no doubt in my mind that you're going to make it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I, 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 I hope I'm not jinxing this for you, but... Yeah. No. We'll, we'll, I mean, we... We are, um, I, I don't know, numbers are looking really good, but I don't, I'm, I'm trying, you ever get to the point where you realize, like, I don't want nothing to change who I am, you know, and that's, that's where I kind of am uh, when, the, when the partner, uh, as folks who are really close to me know that I've, I've talked, one day I'm like, yeah, next day I'm like, nah, next day I'm like, yeah, next day I'm down, nah. Um, it's not off the table, but it's not, right now, it's not the utmost more important thing. Uh, I'm more worried about talking to my accountant and getting my business rolling. Than yeah, I am there you go. Else right now. Well, well but, it, yeah, you're you're a perfect opportunity for uh, the lathe manufacturers to be sponsoring you. I mean, you know, it's like you get that what? stamp of being a partner, and all of a sudden you're legitimate, and you can start approaching these big companies. That would help out a lot. There's, there's, there's absolutely no doubt, Pop. That's one of. If there's one reason why I am going for it is to. Um, it goes back to my ten-year plan. Um, I, I just feel like um, the the more I get seen, the more my values and my ethics and my work ethic kind of gets passed along. That's what I'm trying to sell more than anything else. Uh, there's a fancy stream, all the cool little thing. The hula girls are awesome. 
Um, but the most important thing to me personally is to, to show what, what I'm creating, what I'm passionate about. And, 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 and I like the, a lot of stuff I make, I like to think of it as heirlooms. So when I, when I create something, uh, I got a Purple Heart yarn bowl over here that I've had a lot of, uh, a lot of swear words, a lot of uh, bowl grinding and stuff like that. That, that Purple Heart yarn bowl is going to go off and it's going to be handed down generation to generation to generation. That's what just really churns my butter. That right there is what drives me to keep doing what I'm doing. I get up in the morning and I'm, I want to make something else and I want to make something else because I know my day is going to come where I will no longer be here. But if that piece is still here, I'm still here, if that makes sense. And I just love yeah. being a part of other people's lives. So. Yeah, I've, I've actually got a couple pieces like that. I made a small uh, doll cradle for my daughter when she was little. And I was fortunate enough last year to see that same cradle passed on to my granddaughter. And, and That's you know, stuff, it, it, that is, That's that is, stuff, man. and it, it's a quality piece. You know, I build it myself and I know the feeling quite well. I know the feeling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like my, my Christmas ornaments too. That's, I was really, I don't know why I've always kind of been a ball humbug around Christmas guy. The last two years making Christmas ornaments has been the happiest I've been in a long time around Christmas. It's just, you knowing you're part of so many family traditions, you know, I, I want to talk to you about that Texas hula. Because I want a Christmas ornament so bad from you, but you keep putting those Yankee Yankee seashells in them, and I want a I want a glass globe. I want John Hammond's amber mosquito thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying from Jurassic yeah. Park. I want that in a Christmas ornament, man. When are you gonna branch out and get away, from, huh? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I tell you what, I take a lot of ins inspiration from a, a very, very talented creator um, named Ashley Harwood. And um, and I, right now, I said that Ashley Harwood, Lacey easily dings me in my stream when I say that, because I, I, I have a very... I'm a very, I'm, I'm a very uh, crazy uh, admiration of her talents, I should say. Mm -hmm. The admiration of her talents. But she, a lot of folks use the uh, sea urchins, seashells, and what I like about them is they're delicate. They're, they're, they're not something, and I, I really kind of like that because Christmas is supposed to be about, to me, it's like the, the delicate, you know, the, the special, the unique, and the, and what I like that. I, I don't know. Ding gotcha. ding! Look, everybody's dinging me right now. You yep. see? Yeah, ding ding ding! ding. Yeah, <laughs> I see it. I see it. Well, well, let's let's talk about Lacey Lilith for a minute. Isn't Lacey oh, the from the, is she from the UK or the United States? She is from the UK. Yeah, she's UK. So how, how did you and Lacey meet? I did wind up meeting Lacey. I don't even, you know, when you, when you know somebody, Lacey and Kai. So Lacey and Kai, are, for folks who don't know, we still have folks in this room don't know that Lacey and Kai are husband and wife. It's as funny as I'll get at. Um, I can't remember how we, we, I can't remember how we met. She just, she, she popped in the stream one day, man. And she, she was, she was always talking and she was always like, Hey, what should we do this or this? And she's like, she, she's going to tell you what she thinks you should be doing. I think it should be, Hula, it should be Brazilian ebony. It needs not that one. Hula. And every now that I got to flip the script and just do something different. So everybody don't think I'm doing exactly what Lacey tells me to do every time, but she's very, and she's always been there and super sweet. And she's always watched out for me. And, and you know, we, we made her a mod. And uh, she, she's definitely the queen bee of my mods. There's absolutely no doubt. Lacey is definitely the queen bee. Awesome. Yeah, well, it's so long ago, we don't even remember. It's one of those things. It's just, she's a fixture. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, I've got a lot of people that drop into my channel. And certainly when she drops in, I go, I, it puts a smile on your face, you know? She's she's awesome. Thumbs up. Good good one there. Yeah, she's a rock star. Um what? Why you know you've got you've got a 40 plus hour dollar a uh, 40 plus hour a week job, daytime job. What makes the workshop and streaming so much different from that? Why is it better or, or what? See in the shop, my trade. I'm a, a professionally trained uh, technician. I uh, went to college for it, 
and uh, started off at G uh, dealerships and I started working in fleets. And, and the reason why I did it is it's hard to believe I, have, I was a master certified ASC technician and I'm not even a car guy. I, I really, I really <laughs> don't care much about cars. My favorite kind of car is the one that runs. Um, I, I, you know, I just assume take a whoop and I have to work on my own personal vehicles. Uh, it's just it's something I was good at, you know, this back here, this is what I really love doing. I love creating. So, and you're not really creating, you're fixing things that other folks tear up and break, <laughs> you know? I got, I gotta ask Kula. I gotta ask. You don't like cars other than you, you like the ones that work. Why do you ride a Harley? Like I said, I like things that work. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> you, you do know when I ride with my Honda Goldwing, we make the Harleys go behind us so we don't hit their parts falling off their bikes, right? <laughs> hey, pops. Yeah, we carry spare parts for the Harleys. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're a shots fired guru, man. Did you see shots fired. Shots you know, fired. It's the Harley guy shooting fire. I'm just throwing it out there again. The Harley yeah. guy wouldn't wouldn't shoot him. Now, uh, right, Jesse. Now, seriously, seriously, there are some Harleys that are made for local riding from one bar to the next bar and back bar home hoppers. again. And oh, there, there are the comfort Harleys that are made for the long haul. What kind of Harley mm -hmm. do you have? Uh, mine's a Street Glide, 14 Street Glide. Uh, it's 14, 2014 Harley Davidson Street Glide Special. Uh, it's got the cool boom box and it hooks my phone when I crank the bike up. I put my music on, it says Hula's, Hula's yep. phone hooked up, you know. Um, I got 14 inch apes on it. Uh, the group I rode with, we rode a lot of miles, Pops. When I, I, bought, the, I bought my bike, Betty. Uh, she had five miles on her in Paris, Texas. I rode her home, and then for the last year and a half, I pretty much given her given her a break because I rode a lot of miles. She's a 2014 with 92,000 miles on her right now. I was I had so many thousand mile weekends, it wasn't even funny. I was on the bike all the time. Rain, uh, rain. I would say snow or sleet. We don't get a lot of that down here, but nasty, cold, hot as all get out. I was on the bike all the time, and. Um, yeah, 92,000 miles. Yeah, I'm, I'm so proud I had that bike. There's wow. no way I could have done it before any, without that. Any epic trips in that time frame on your bike? What? Yeah, I've had some really good ones, uh, and I had some really not so good ones. Uh, I really used to enjoy our trips we used to make to uh, Kerrville. I used to enjoy the trips to Kerrville. We had a uh, kind of a big to-do thing with the, uh, the organization in that neck of the woods, and we went every year. And um, I really enjoyed those trips there, but I've had many, many trips that I did not like, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, uh, Nick trips. But um, I mean, yeah, it's some, some are better than others. I don't have anything like I never really did a whole lot of just for fun trips. Most of mine were for taking care of business. How about Sturgis? So, Do you ever go to Sturgis at all? Nope. Never nope. been to Sturgis. If I go, I'm going to ride. And I'm, I'm, yes, I'm one of those old faithfuls. I'm not going to. I'm not going to trailer a bike to Sturgis. If I'm going to Sturgis, I'm riding. But you mean so, you're not uh, going to trailer your bike to within 10 miles of Sturgis and then ride in like a, like a hero? No, <laughs> sir. No, sir. I'll no. tell you what, I could lie to anybody I want to. I still got to get in the morning and look that man in the mirror. So yeah, uh, there there's, you no go. Way, there's no way I could trailer a bike to Sturgis. I just can't do it. Good for you, man. Good for you. Um, what, what one word, Hula? would you use to describe your community, your streaming community? And you can't say awesome. Can't say awesome. I was thinking epic too. Family. family. There you go. That's the way I look at it, family. You know, I, I got people from all over the world coming in and calling me Uncle Hula, and uh, I'm like a big bro to them, you know. Um, I know. I look at I look at it like family. I always I tell you what, I've always believed in my heart that blood makes you related and loyalty makes you family. And I'm not talking about loyalty to you're gonna do what I say. It's basically loyal to watch out to one another and watch out for each other's six and take care of them. if somebody's having a crap day, you pick pick them up and stuff like that. That to me is loyalty. And that's and I've said it for a long time. I've I've kind of learned that in the uh, biker world and I pretty much 
it's, it's funny. I base a lot of the stuff in my stream off of uh, the biker logic. It's just do right by people. You know, it's not it's not the sons of anarchy. Everybody likes to think it really is. It's more about brotherhood and sisterhood and being there for one another. And just because you're not blood related, don't make you not my brother or my sister. You know. Yep. And also that mean tells you wear the same clothes I wear, the same patch I wear, or you stream on the same services I wear, that you're my brother or sister either. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of those kind of things. Awesome. How about how about gaming? Are you gonna be doing any more streaming gaming or you pretty much yeah. made the shift? No, I'm gonna be going back to gaming, you know, with um with some of the stuff kinda going on and pretty good momentum going a certain direction. I'm being really kind of picky when I'm actually streaming right now. Um, I hope soon we're going to be back doing the cooking streams. I do. We're going to be covering the back patio. I'm going to do an outdoor kitchen out there. A lot more cooking streams for that right there. Uh, I will be doing more gaming streams. Um, there's no telling. I like just being kind of all over the place. The, the main place is in this shop. This is where I feel more at home, more comfortable. Uh, I had the opportunity to do the, um, the Bob's Christmas event. That was the most over-the-top, epic, humbling nerve-wracking thing i have been out of that office streaming for so I know. long i literally thought i was my head was going to explode i i got done pop i went in there i sat down and ate some daggum chicken my wife picked up and had a beer at lunch i normally don't ever do that but i had a beer after that because i was like you know what i'm done i'm, I'm done don't expect nothing. yeah it was stressful i know i've done it two years and it's like the night before it's hard to sleep and it's crazy but such a wonderful wonderful feeling is it's, it's an epic awesome opportunity for an epic cause that's, that's right look at that's awesome um world of warships the game itself yes do you think that that game has actually helped you get where you are today i i say yes i say yes the reason why World of Warships, I love the game. I'm going to say this out loud. I really love the game. But I had the opportunity to meet so many incredible people. I mean, incredibly awesome people. I mean, yourself included. Uh, Grumbles the Dwarf. Grumbles, man, I cannot say enough kind of things about that boy. I, I just, just love that boy to death. Uh, Chaos, you got the Grumpy Beard. You got T.C. Freer. You got all these rock stars, man. And they're just really, really good people. If it wasn't for the game of World of Warships, I wouldn't have the opportunity to meet these guys. And Guru, I see you call me a dirty CV nerd. I'm gonna pretend like I didn't even <laughs> see that, sir. I'm just, I'm just gonna look away. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> Guru <laughs> to your corner, Guru. Uh, CV nerd. I'm okay with that. Uh, but no, I, I love the game. Uh, I got to figure out how to turn chat off. Other than that, uh, I have no complaints about the game at all. To be honest with you, you win some, you lose some. You have good games, you have some not so good games. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, rain will hit worse for you. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, you, <laughs> so you, it's, your mic's cutting in and out there a little bit. Tap it. Bring it back a little bit. There you go. Um, children, I think. Uh, do you have children? I don't know. Oh, yeah. You know what? Tell you what, Pops. I officially felt old the uh, the fifteenth of this month. I oh, was it fourteenth. Uh-oh, careful. 14th, 14th. Uh, my youngest baby girl, Duck, um, she uh, she turned 18. So I have two grown kids. Wow. God, I, feel, I just feel my hair just get grayer all of a sudden. Is it getting grayer or is it just me? Yeah, it, it's changing, but that's that's <laughs> whatever. Well, uh, have have any of your children shown any interest in doing like what you do in the shop? Not really, not really. Uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, uh, Duck, she she's got a creative side, and she she mentioned this and that. I think she wants to get into making fancy smancy dollhouses. Oh wow! Like, hey, do it. Cause she said she's seen some on like Instagram and TikTok that she said, um, I know I can do better. Sure. Uh, so, well, first off, that's my daughter and uh, go for it, chick, you know, but no, not really. I, and that, in fact, I'm a, literally the only guy with all girls around me. Literally both our dogs are even girls. I'm completely 100% surrounded. So coming out of here with the beer fridge out here and man glitter everywhere, that's, that's how I compensate, to be honest with you. And and where is it you're hiding that beer fridge exactly? Oh, the beer fridge is right there, sir. 
the beer right fridge there. of honor. Right, right beside the door to the kitchen. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. days I cut off the bike, I walk, grab a beer, and walk right in the house. It's, it actually works really well. Awesome. Awesome. You, you're holding up one of your Harry Potter wands on the scene behind you there. It's, it's awesome. I can see it. I got it on my other monitor over here, and I can see it. Uh, man, that wood is just simply beautiful, man. Yeah, it's, that's it's, Paduke. It's Paduke and Brazilian ebony on that one right there. Yeah. yeah. Stunning woods. I, I, I love experimenting and trying new things. Some, some new woods work. Some new woods don't work, but it is what it is, I guess. Now, Live do, and learn. Any anyone else in your family ride motorcycles, or is it just you? You know, it's funny. My father-in-law, uh, my, my my late father-in-law, he grew, grew up on the back of a rigid. Uh, literally, he built bikes for ever and always. And when I met Miss Soup, here's a funny story. Everybody thought it was the funniest thing that she's marrying a guy who'd never been on a bike the day in his life was scared out of his mind of him. And I went from that guy right there to uh, being a guy who bought a bike and rode I probably got about 120,000 miles under my belt so far on the scoot. So, but as far as my side, no. As as far as um, my family, not really. Just kind of got into it. It's one of those weird things, and we did it. Well, when when did you start riding a bike? Then, how long uh, you been 2011. riding? 2011. 2011. I got my. Wow, five, five. this is this is uncanny. Uh, yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a lot older than you are, but uh, I've got a son that's older than you are. But um, I started. I I got my family. I got to tell this story. Sorry, guys. I in 2010, I got my family together and I said, "Look, I'm getting old. My kids are all grown. I'm going to do one of three things." I'm either going to get an RV so I can travel the country in luxury, comfort, or I'm going to get a sleeper boat and put it on a lake, or I'm going to get a motorcycle. And, and you know what my family said? My, my family vetoed all three. <laughs> So so about about a month later I went out and looked at a motorcycle with my son and uh, his friend and I had the trailer hooked to the back of the truck and my wife came out to the driveway and she said where are you going and I said I'm going to look at a motorcycle she said why are you taking the trailer <laughs> if you're just looking anyway that was back in 2010, um, and I have never ridden a motorcycle in my life up till that time. And what was I, let's see, 50, 58, 57 years old, never rode a motorcycle, and I bought a Honda Goldwing 1832 cc's. Anyway, I, I'm not looking back. Um, there you go. Uh, what and and friends, if you and Hula will back me up on this, if you've never ridden a motorcycle, there is no way that we can explain it to you. You wouldn't understand. You just wouldn't understand. It's quite a feeling that you get. Uh, it definitely so, is. It definitely is. Yeah, I know. At times, I've felt like. Uh, you know, I w I've been riding on the open road. I might be by myself. Sometimes I got my wife behind me. But you're just riding those back roads, and, and you feel like what it must have been like for the early days in the United States when people uh, rode I, uh, horses to get everywhere. You know, it's just it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, it's funny. I went to uh, Amarillo, Texas. We we made a road trip up there. Uh, one of our chapter had something going on that neck of the woods. I got a very close brother we call Pop, uh, Pup. Pup is Pup is a rock solid guy. He's a uh, vet. Uh, he's seen some really tough stuff and uh, love that. Love I love my bro to death. So I surprised him. We rode over to Amarillo, Texas. So that's probably around a ten hour drive from here. And um, I remember I, I remember making that ride because it was me and um, a very close brother of mine. Uh, it's uh, he actually streamed it for a little bit. We made that road trip, and I remember going out in West Texas, and they got those little mounds of um, of rock that just kind of sticks up, and it looks like something you see in Tombstone, 
or the, the old movies and stuff like that. And I remember riding those roads, not a car out there nowhere, open plains there when you see these rock formations come out of nowhere. And I swear I could wait. I was waiting for Billy the Kid to come right around the uh, corner. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I could just see it. I could see it. And it was so... So I know that that right there is epic. But there's also this moment, though, Pops. I don't know if you had the opportunity. I actually led a pack of... Um, we had a we had a big pack one and I had that left front spot. You know, left front spot is pretty much just the uh, the guy who directs where you going, how fast you going, where you going to turn the whole nine yards. I got to ride the left front spot uh, for a pack of around sixty five patched. I mean, patched to prospects. And when you talking about rolling a train like that sucker there, they're going down the interstate, you run at eighty miles an hour. I set the cruise about eighty eighty two. Everybody's a lot of folks are running tank to tank. We look like a daggum freight train running down that damn <laughs> interstate, sir. And yeah. I'm talking just, I mean, just, you could, you look at my review and all I see is these headlights and they're rumbling and you got the wind and you got the music blast and you look over, you got a close brother to your right and you got all these brothers and sisters behind you on your scoots, man. That was epic. I was scared out of my mind. Like, oh my God, I got state officers sitting here watching me. Don't mess this up, yeah. Hula. But yeah, it's it's just, man, it's there's nothing like it. There's absolutely. I like riding by myself, and I, I love riding in a good solid pack too. Yeah. Now the it's only it. I have experienced what you've experienced, except for one key element. There was no rumble with my group. Oh, was, so y'all were going in stealth mode. Y'all were going yeah, like y'all were doing it, like some kind of stealth mode into. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a it's like thirty sewing machines going down the highway, right? Uh, <laughs> The angry singers are coming at you. You yeah. better watch out. No doubt. No doubt. All right, man. If you were had the ability to have one superpower, Ula, what would you pick for a day? For a day. One superpower. If I have one superpower for a day. Oh, wow. Um, man. I, I don't like flying, so that kind of takes that there out of it. I don't know. Man, I wow! I don't know, man. I say be invisible. I'd be invisible for a day. That'd be kind of nice. It's basically invisible for my work phone. Yeah, that's what I'd love to do. <laughs> if I could be invisible for my work phone. Yeah, that's turn a that sucker off. Right yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> uh, how about if I? Uh, I know you like food. I know you like food. If you oh, could, my goodness. if you could be any type of food, hula. What would that food be? Hey, boss, I'm 100% Texas boy, born and raised. It's going to be a badass brisket, sir. Just a <laughs> big old I man, love brisket, bad man. Bad to the bone brisket. Now, do you do you Texas have a high. do you have a smoker yet out on? Uh... Is is the Pope Catholic? Yes, oh, sir. okay, yes, yeah, sir. okay. I, I actually got two of them. I get I get I get Raz for my uh, my pellet smoker that everybody says crap and i'm cheating and it broke down and then i fix it then it broke down again and then it broke down again and so i wound up getting the uh, oklahoma joe's um smoker that i went to conventional stick burner cubbies was so proud the cubby in the chat right there he was so proud he, that boy would have gave me a hug if he's in your closer because i got away from the pellet for a little bit but oh yeah we do the smoking around here uh done it some on stream we do uh i do cooking on the stream all nine yards but yeah i love running a smoker Awesome. I'm getting better at it. Awesome. If you if you could, uh, we're coming to the to the nonsensical question section of the interview. If you could switch lives with someone for a day, who would you choose? Alive or dead? Either. Either. Man, I would love to walk a day in Sam Malouf's. I'm not sure if you guys even know who Sam Malouf is. I would love to walk a day in his life. Sam Malouf is one of my most inspirational creators, I think, ever. Y'all look him up. He's actually known. There's a style of rocking chairs that's 100% called a Malouf-style rocking chair. Wow. Uh, the man, he's the one that I got the idea of creating a life I don't have to retire from. Uh, I really highly recommend folks finding a video. It's like the last days of Sam Malouf. Uh, and they, they it, basically, to, to cut and dry, is uh, one, of his, one of the guys working at a studio they knew Sam was out there. Sam was 91 years old, and they, they knew he was out there. He come around, they didn't hear anything. They couldn't see anywhere. And then they, they heard some shuffling, and he got scared because he couldn't see Sam. And he went out there and said, there's a 91-year-old man laying on the ground in his shop, laying on the ground, 
right next to his rocking chair and he was actually watching that sucker rock scene where he actually needed to fine tune the bottom of that um bottom of the cradle uh or where, where it rocks at and i said that's the man i want to be i want to be a 91 year old guy wanting that that piece come out of my shop with my name on it to be perfect as well i want to be sam maloof i would love to be sam maloof for a day that's just that's my boy that's just my awesome so much we're, inspiration we're gonna have to look that up yeah i highly recommend it now we're coming we're coming to coming to the end of the time frame we had allotted i do want to give you some time to talk to the community if there if there's a message that you want to give the community now's your time Chase your dreams, do what you enjoy doing. Understand that you're gonna do things you don't enjoy doing to get to the point where you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, be nice to one of each other. I, I think if there's one thing I would like to say more than anything else is uh, folks, be nice to each other. You know, I, I think we, we're, we're in a really kind of crazy time nowadays with a lot of people on earth with everything kind of going on. I don't, I don't like talking about it too much in stream, but, um, be nice with each other and also get out there and create man use your hands just just i don't care what it is you're making pottery making a birdhouse you want to make a a felt yoshi go make a felt yoshi just just make something do something you know i mean it's good to have sit down time but let's let's get this here journey sometimes and use these some you know awesome well, Hula, I want to tell you uh, personally, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I have enjoyed this chat. It's been awesome. Yeah, I have enjoyed it as well. Yes, sir. And it has certainly been a chance to get to know you a little bit better, the man behind the stream. You know, we see you stream, and but we don't get a chance to do this one-on-one -on -one kind of interface with you. And uh, it's been a pleasure to have you here, yeah, and I, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. And, Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Um, now, for the viewers out there, guys, uh, I will be posting this video up on YouTube after the 24-hour obligatory time frame that I have to do, but I'll also be reaching out to Hula so that he'll give me all his contact information, which will be in the description of that YouTube video. Wow. So if you missed it, you can check the YouTube video and be able to get all the links that uh, that will put you in contact with Texas Hula if you want any of his products, his website, all his social media stuff. So again, I appreciate that. Awesome, dude. Thank lot. you. I'm going to share it with my mom. She can't. She can't get on Twitch. She's having some kind of issues getting on Twitch. I was like, hey, mom, are you go check us out? Yeah, it's just, uh, <laughs> it, it would be a video. I think if, YouTube is so much easier for older folks, if you will, to get to it, than it is. trying to figure out Twitch. It is, it is. I still got to get my mom on Twitch, though. I got to get her on Twitch. There's just so many two people, a lot of people that I think she'd really enjoy hanging out, you know, hanging out with. Well, I think a lot of people would enjoy, put her in a rocking chair in the back of the studio there. It works well, you know what? I we talked about it, and I'm not done doing it. I'm, I'm telling you what, I think I'm going to have a stream. My mom teaches me how to crochet. I've made all kinds of crochet yarn bowls. I don't know how to crochet. My mom crochets like a beast, and we may have Hula's trying to learn how to... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm taking my own medicine to get out there and create, do something different every now and then, you know? There you go. Learn how to crochet. Yeah, make, make, your, uh, make your mother a rock star on, on Twitch. That would be awesome. Oh, Right on. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Texas Hula, thanks again. Everybody out there, thank you for being here. Uh, all you guys with the subs and the hype trains, you guys know who you are. I know who you are. Thank you so much for the continued support. And coming up next week, we're going to have Hapa Fodder on for our interview next week. And we will be talking about Hapa as a person. And as a Navy retired chief petty officer, there'll be no questions about World of Warships in that old interview. So, again, Texas Hula, thanks for being here. Everyone, good night. We'll see you tomorrow.
Take care. Night, Texas, Joe. thanks again. Yes, sir.